Terra released an NA back in 2012 and has gone through a ton of changes, improvements, and updates through the years. What once was seen as one of the more graphically pleasing MMOs on the market has survived up until this point and actually still has a pretty big fan base for an MMO that has been out for almost eight years now. It marketed itself as the first MMO with true action combat and at the time there were a couple of other MMOs that had an action combat system but nothing as robust as Terra with every skill or ability in both PvE and PvP being aimable and dodgeable. Now in 2020, the MMO still claims to be the only MMO with true action combat. But I am not sure that that statement still stands because we do know that there are quite a bit of other MMOs that have relevant action combat systems in place. Even Bluehole's next MMO, Elyon, or the Old Air MMO, will be using the same system. So it'll be interesting if they continue to claim that for Terra. Well, the game has gone through tons of content updates through the years, the transition several years ago to go to free to play, as well as launching on Xbox and PlayStation in the past. We are going to show off as much as we can of Terra to highlight the good, the bad, and the changes for those who have never played the game before and for those who used to play the game and are maybe considering giving it another try. It has been quite some years myself since I have last played and once I jumped in I saw that they increased the level cap from 65 up to 70 so this is going to be interesting trying to see me adjust to learn everything again. I will show off some low level gameplay, some PvE, some PvP and what the goals are at endgame and then finish it off with my final thoughts about Terra in 2020. Terra has 7 different races and 13 different classes to choose from and since launch they have actually introduced 5 new classes which are the Reaper, the Gunner, the Brawler, the Ninja, and Valkyrie. Every class is pretty unique and they all fall under the tank, DPS, and healer triangle where some of them can actually be spec towards support or tank and so on and so forth. For example, the warrior that I'm playing here can be a more dodge or evasion oriented tank or it can also be a melee DPS role depending on how you gem your gear and how you choose to upgrade your abilities. As you level up, you will get more skills and abilities but also you will be able to level up certain ones more for a better spec character depending on the role that you're looking to fit into. Certain abilities will be better to upgrade as their higher ranks will offer better stats, more damage, more healing, and etc. Now for those who have played the game before, but maybe it was years ago, the starting zone has changed and they have actually streamlined the starting quest a bit which pretty much happens in every MMO after years of updating. Honestly, I never really followed the story in Terra to begin with so I can't really tell you what the f*** is going on but let's be real, you're just gonna spam the F key to get through the quest anyway so the quests are pretty standard when it comes to questing in MMOs with kill this, talk to this person, collect these and protect this person as they go somewhere but they aren't really too tough aside from some of the ones that you're going to need a group to finish such as the dungeon quest or the BAM quest. For those who don't know what BAMs are, uh, well it's short for badass monsters or what is it badass or big ass monsters? I don't know, same shit. These big monsters are sprinkled throughout the zones in Terra and they can be solo for EXP and gear. If you are someone who doesn't like to group up with people, you can still solo those. But you'll probably need a group for the dungeons because those are quite tough with the amount of mobs and how hard they actually do hit someone. Now something else that they added in a couple of years ago are these weapons that you can get as you level that will upgrade as you level. Uh, so I believe it's like every 10 levels they'll give you a new one so that they have helped streamline the questing process even more to cut down the time it takes for players to kill which in result will cut down the questing grind. Terra has standard questing but if you're someone who enjoys action combat then you might be able to overlook the questing in order to get to the end game. One thing that did make me enjoy the combat even more since the last time I played was the introduction to the awakening abilities. This is something that other games have implemented so if you have played let's say Black Desert before you may be familiar with it. They give the class extra abilities on usually longer cooldowns that will do more damage or more healing or be able to mitigate more damage depending on the role that you are playing. It is a way to spice up the combat and introduce something new than the same skills that players have been using over the years. Some of you may be wondering, well, if Terra has good combat, 
how is their PvP? The PvP in Terra is not really unique for what we have seen in MMOs in the past or present with the open world PvP being able to be toggled on by players if they're looking to gank other players within a zone. Terra has a karma system that you will build up when you kill more people throughout the world, especially if they are a lot lower level than you. Now, if you build up more of this karma, it's going to restrict you from doing certain things and going into certain towns. So just know that if you're going to start uh, player killing people, especially if they're lower level, you'll get more and it's going to take some time for that karma to actually go back down closer to zero. Aside from that, they also have battlegrounds or as they call it, death matches. The interesting thing about death matches is you can actually bet and put some gold on it if you're a confident in your chances to win. There are a good amount of different maps and I believe they introduce new ones for certain holiday events and stuff like that. You can also duel people, but that's pretty standard so yeah. Now the large part of the higher end of PvP is this guild versus guild battles. I am just jumping back into this game casually so I'm not a part of a guild to show this off but you should be seeing some sort of gameplay from someone else. These guild battles can be started by a guild leader where 24 guild members go up against 24 other members of another guild throughout the world so similar to how the open world PvP goes you still have to be on high alert. The guild battles go on for 24 hours and each kill gives you points and after either the 24 hours are up or one guild forfeits, the winner is seen as the better guild. Terra's PvE is also quite standard by MMO's means in 2020, but the difficulty is definitely there for those who enjoy a little bit of a higher competitive PvE scene for their dungeons. From early leveling, you can participate in dungeons to get better gear, as well as quests for them so that you can get some better experience to help you level up. Dungeons are a large part of the end game PvE content as new dungeons are released with larger updates as well as doing max level BAMs which are those large ass mother that are recommended to get help from some friends that I was talking about before. Addition to doing dungeon runs similar to Black Desert's enchantment system, you can upgrade your gear to plus 15 with a sort of leveling system that goes with it the, the more that you upgrade this gear. Now unfortunately, after you spam these dungeons to get your best in slots at max level and actually to get enough materials to enchant your gear, uh, which I heard does require a lot of RNG, uh, something similar to how Black Desert's tech gear does the content pretty much runs dry from there uh, you can go ahead and take all that gear to try and uh, PK people out in the world and maybe do some death matches after all of this so yeah the end game does focus a lot around doing these dungeons for the gear and the materials to enhance the gear but after that it becomes kind of like a fashion war for costumes and doing your dailies Terra has come quite a long way since its release in North America. What once was a young MMO with beautiful graphics is now a veteran with some slightly dated graphics, but still one of the best combat systems in an MMO to date, if I had to say so myself. The questing might put off a lot of new players especially when you're getting closer to max level like the late 50s and most of the 60s because it's very repetitive with talking to one person then teleporting then talk to another person then teleport and so on and so forth the end game is focused more on pve so if you are someone who enjoys doing dungeons this would be a better fit for you than if you're looking to do a lot of like open world pvp battlegrounds and guild battles uh, because there is a small focus on pvp and they don't have the specific things like small arena Arenas and stuff like that. Terra has stayed relevant through all the years since it has released, especially for a now free to play MMO that comparatively to the others, I think it should be considered as one of the better ones. I would suggest Terra to people looking for a free to play action combat MMO because it is one of the best ones in that realm. But if you're looking for an MMO that has tons of PvP content or like a strong storyline with interesting questing, then this game probably just isn't for you. And for those who have played it before, have you hopped back in recently or are you willing to give it another try? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let me know if I should check out some other games or some other MMOs or RPGs to check them out for a 2020 version. But anyway, nonetheless, Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll check you guys out in the next one.